Hello, my name is Lynn Gillespie, and I will be your guide to discover the 12 high-performance garden characteristics with weekly training videos. A high-performance garden is one of the most fun, productive, and organic gardening experiences you will ever have. A garden that is enjoyable, weed-free, productive, and so very easy to achieve. Hello, I'm Lynn Gillespie, organic farmer and creator of the Abundance Garden course. Today we're going to continue to teach you about the high performance garden characteristic number four, which is very little time. So last week we were talking about easy transplants, and this week we're going to talk about fussy transplants. So as you remember, there was three main categories for the type of plants that we could transplant. One was an easy transplanter. One is the plants that are fussy that sort of like to be transplanted. And then there's a category of plants that do not like to be transplanted at all. And if you transplant them, a lot of times they're stunted or they can die. So if you are um, interested in figuring out which category the seeds are that you want to transplant, go ahead and take a look at our website. You want to go to the high performance garden training number three, which is the one we did last week. And on the blog page, there's a list um, on the website for the different categories and seeds that you can look up. So today we're going to work with the fussy transplants. And there's a couple different things that are different for them that we're going to do than we did with the easy transplants. Uh, first thing that the fussy transplants is you got a couple choices. You can sow them directly into the garden. Um, or you can start them in a pot. And if we start them in a pot, what we're doing is we're saving some time because the garden may not be ready, but we can get the plants started early. Um, the key to making this successful is the timing of the transplanting. <clears throat> on the easy transplants, they can get a little bit on the big side and they still transplant really easy. But these fussy ones, they do not like their roots to be disturbed. And so we're wanting to transplant them when they're a little bit on the young side and when the roots are just starting to form before they start to kind of ball around inside the pot. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and plant some for you. And then in a few weeks, when they're just to the right size, we'll do a transplanting session with them so you can see exactly what to do with them. OK, let me show you how we start our fussy transplants. Okay, so now we're going to work with some of the plants that are fussy to transplant. And like I say, timing is really critical on those. So you're only going to start these two to four weeks before it's time to plant them out in the garden. So the first thing we need to look at is what kind of pot are we going to plant them in? Um, sometimes this is really important to the plants. So we do have things that are like the peat pots. These are biodegradable. So what that means is that you can actually plant the whole pot into the soil. And that is the best way to keep from disturbing the roots. So we'll plant in some of those. They come in big and they come in small. If you have bigger seeds, you know, that are like cucumber, squash, you want to use the bigger pots. And if you're doing smaller seeds like lettuce or something, you can use the littler pots. Um, if you don't want to go and buy pots and you get a newspaper, you can make these newspaper pots. Super simple. You just uh, get a tin can, cut a strip of newspaper, wrap it around, and then the bottom, you just fold it in. So just these little flaps, you just fold it in. And then we're going to put our soil right in there. And then after three or four weeks, this newspaper is pretty disintegrated and you can plant that whole pot as well. Um, I will show you how to put them in the nursery containers and then how to transplant them carefully out of the nursery containers. And then today I'm going to do some beet seeds for you because they fit in the fussy category. And I'm actually going to start them in this little bitty flat. So the first thing that we need to do is to figure out on the type of soil that we're going to use for these. Uh, one of the biggest, biggest mistakes that people make is they go out into the yard, dig up some soil, put it in here, and then plant their seeds in it. And nine times out of ten, their seeds don't come up and they don't know why. Uh, the majority of us have horrible soil in our yards. And it 
is not real conducive to germinating seeds. Seeds need a couple things. They need air and they need moisture. And usually the clay soil holds too much moisture and not enough air, and so the seeds rot. And if you have sandy soil, it's just the opposite. Not enough moisture, too much air, and the seeds never germinate. So I'm going to share with you today my family secret seedling mix, which I shared with you guys last week on number three for doing the easy, easy transplant seedlings. And so what this soil mix is, is three parts peat moss or coconut core, one part sand and one part perlite. And when you're measuring your parts, you can use any size of container, just three scoops of peat, one scoop of sand, one scoop of perlite. So what the peat moss or the coconut core does is it holds in that moisture. The sand and the perlite are their, their bigger particulates and they allow the air to come in. So the combination of the peat moss or the coconut core and the sand and the perlite makes this perfect blend to germinate your seeds. The other thing that seeds do not need is nutrients in the soil. And sometimes if you're gathering uh, your soil from your garden, it could have some nutrients. And sometimes that nutrients inhibits the seeds from sprouting. So what we've learned to do here is to put the nutrients in the bottom, the seeds go in the top, and once the plant needs the nutrients, the roots have grown down and can get down in the compost and then it feeds itself. So that's a pretty cool way to do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is in our pots, is I have a bucket of compost here, and I'm gonna put about a quarter inch in the bottom of my pots. And that's to feed the plants when they get ready. Okay, we're gonna plant these three today. Okay, so then the next thing we need to do is to do our soil. And I have a batch of the Family Secret Soil Mix right here. And put that in our pot. Okay, now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to plant is some beet seeds. Now, if you're not sure how deep to plant your seeds, uh, you can look in the catalog that you bought your seeds from, or you can read on the seed packet. Uh, but there is a general rule of thumb that you can plant the seeds to three times their width. So if you take a look at these beet seeds, they are about an eighth of an inch across. So we can plant them to three eighths of an inch deep. So I'm just going to put some of these in here. Um, the cool thing about beet seeds is, is that each one of these little uh, kind of hexagonal seed seeds is actually a seed packet. There's multiple seeds kind of glued together. So that's why you always have to thin your beets because you can never plant them singly. Okay, so we got some beet seeds there and then we're wanting to cover these with about three-eighths of an inch of soil. And I like to take my soil and grind it between my hands and that way, if I have any big chunks of peat moss, it kind of grinds them up. Okay, you can pity pat that a little. Uh, you always want to write a tag. And I put what, the, what it is, and then I put the date. And that date travels with these plants throughout the whole garden season. So if I'm planting too early or too late, or I want to adjust that, I know what date that is. So in my journal, I can write, oh, start beets a week earlier, or start beets a week later. Okay, the best way to soak these, or to get them wet, is just to set them in a tray of water. So I have a tray of water here, and we're just gonna let that soak. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna plant for you is some cucumbers. And I'm gonna put them in a pot that, um, we'll have to take them completely out of the pot. We can't plant the plastic pot. It's not gonna do us any good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant what's called a hill. And a hill is where you put like four or five plants in one pot. And then when we um, unpot this to plant it, we plant it all together as one pile or one hill of plants. Uh, one mistake that a lot of people make is they'll plant a hill in here, four or five plants, and then when they go to plant them out, they rip them apart and that disturbs the roots and then they die. So we're gonna go ahead and put five seeds in here. So we don't know if they'll all live. Okay, so if you look at these, they are, oh, about an eighth of an inch wide. So we can plant these uh, three-eighths of an inch deep. Okay, so i got a little more soil here. Put a 
our tag in it. We're also going to soak that. Okay, now we have our peat pot. I'm also going to do a newspaper pot. I think I'll do this one. Compost in the bottom. And then some of our secret seedling mix. Okay, and into these we're going to put some butternut squash. Now these seeds are even bigger. We're also going to plant these in a hill. They like to grow in a hill. And so another method that we can use to plant these is we can poke the seeds down in because I got my pot full of soil. So about three times the width of these is, well, that's about a quarter inch. So we could go down as far as three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to poke four holes in here with my finger, kind of using my finger as a measurement. Drop my seeds down in. These seeds love this soil mix. You'll be amazed at how well your seeds germinate in this awesome soil mix. This one I think I'm going to put three because it's a little smaller around. Okay. You just have to smooth that soil over the top. Put a tag in that. And we're going to soak those as well. Okay. All right, so then the next thing that you're going to do, once these are all soaked up, I want to drain it a little, is we want to keep the moisture on the surface. So we're going to take, uh, you can just get a piece of plastic wrap from the kitchen. And we're going to put that on there and get me a rubber band. Hold that on. So we can pull that a little tight. That keeps the plastic up off the soil. And then we want to poke some air holes. Pencil works pretty good. And we're going to put our tag back in that. Now, you need to germinate these in a place where uh, the temperature is correct for them. Most vegetable seeds will germinate between 65 and 70. But if you guys grab a Johnny's catalog, it has a germination um, chart on it, and it'll tell you the best temperature that these will germinate at. Uh, one of the places you might want to check is like on top of your refrigerator. Those are usually a little bit warm up there. That's a great place to germinate. Um, a place to not germinate is in the window seal. So if the sun comes in and shines on this plastic, it's going to cook the seeds that are in here. And then at night, it gets a little cold in the window seal. So you don't want your seeds to be there. You don't want that temperature fluctuating up and down. So find a place that's hopefully between 65 and 70, and you can germinate your seeds there. Now, if you're interested in seeing our germination chamber that we use for the, our commercial operation, uh, we did a farm mini tour on it. And so you can go to our website, thelivingfarm.org. And uh, if you look under farm mini tours, you'll see the germination chamber and you guys can see exactly how we germinate all of our seeds. So once your seeds are coming up, it's time to take the plastic off. And then you're going to want to take that and soak it again in your water. And then you're going to want to find a location that's bright and sunny uh, for your plants to grow on. I'm going to keep these growing on and then in a few weeks we'll do another video for you where we show you how to transplant these out into the garden because it's really critical to get them at the right size. Not too big, not too small. So, Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, planting the fussy transplanters. Uh, next week we're going to do the plants that do not like to be transplanted at all. So we're going to sow those directly into the garden for you. So I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week on another edition of the High Performance Garden Training Video Series. Want access to more videos like this? Click the link in the description below this video to join the High Performance Garden Community for free. Community members receive weekly High Performance Garden video trainings, articles, and trade secrets delivered directly to your inbox. Do you know anyone else who is frustrated and struggling with their garden? Share this video so they can begin to transform their garden into a high performance garden too. They'll thank you later. If you want to transform your garden into a high performance garden in one season, you can enroll in the Abundance Garden course, the only gardening course where you can garden step by step 
with your gardening coach. Click the link in the description below this video to learn more about the Abundance Garden course. If you have a topic you would like us to make a video about, please send us an email. Or if you have a gardening question, you can also email us at thelivingfarm at tds.net. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. May your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.